Welcome to the Holy Land, Outremer, the crossroads of East and West Christianity and Islam lie the twin kingdoms of Jerusalem and Cyprus, and in the wake of the Third Crusade some two decades prior, the Levant was in turmoil. Hello my friends, I'm Eddie Pride from Milk and Cookies Total War, and today we're going to be taking our very first look at the hotly anticipated Medieval Kingdom's 1212 AD campaign, a mod for Total War Attila that brings the medieval period to life in vivid color and modern graphics. And let's be real here. Medieval 2 is a legendary game, Kingdoms is an amazing expansion, but it is beginning to show its age. So what we're gonna do today is plunge into the Holy Land with the Lucian Dynasty, with the Knights Templar and Hospitaller at our beck and call, and do what the Third Crusade could not, push back the Ayyubid Dynasty and Abbasid Caliphate, recapture Jerusalem, and reclaim the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in the name of Christendom. The year is 1212 AD, Enemies are massing at our borders, political intrigue threatens to rip apart the kingdom from within, and a tenuous alliance with the Byzantines could shatter under the weight of the Fourth Crusade. This is a time of faith, a time of battle, a time of total war. Jerusalem has come. So before we jump into this campaign, I want to give a huge shout out to Warman, ZS Immortal, and the rest of the Medieval Kingdom's mod team for giving me early access, and thank them for allowing me to show alpha gameplay. And this is alpha. The campaign is not even close to being finished yet, and it is not available to the public either, but there's a ton of content to show off, so that's what we're gonna do. Jerusalem is just a stone's throw from Accra, and it's pretty clear we're gonna need to attack it very soon because Abu Bakr is in Damascus. They have another full stack in Alexandria, but for the moment, the crown jewel is relatively undefended. But let's check out our capital of Famagusta, the seat of our power in the Holy Land, home of the Lusignan dynasty. Our faction leader is Hugh I of Cyprus, and John of Brienne sits in Accra with the Knights Templar. So let's get a governor real quick and take stock of the situation. But we can't really afford to sit around and kind of dilly-dally for too long because if Abu Bakr force marches through the desert before we can strike, that is going to be a very tough fight if he manages to garrison the city. A lot of the starting armies for these factions are quite powerful because they're, I mean, obviously they're established kingdoms. They are already rich. They already have trade agreements and alliances. So we need to strike very hard and very quickly before they can mobilize. Now, siege assets have not been implemented yet. I think there are some other mods in the Steam Workshop right now for Attila that convert the siege maps themselves into a more medieval style of architecture, but we won't have access to those in this playthrough. So Jerusalem, Damascus, and Homs, and some of the other settlements that are right around Accra and the Holy Land we're in right now are not going to have that epic 13th century feel. They're gonna look more Attila-ish, more 5th century. So. And that's something we'll, they are planning on working on. I believe they're working on it right now, but I don't know when that will be implemented. And like I said, this is alpha gameplay. So there are going to be mechanics and unit details and other things that have not been fully put into the mod yet, but that's okay. So what we're going to do here is sail out with Hugh and get all the way into Accra, group up and try to move southward super quick and get at Jerusalem. Like I said, Abu Bakr is also just a stone throw away from Jerusalem. He's hanging out in Damascus to our east right now. And if we allow him to mobilize and get into the city, killing them off is gonna be really hard. I think he starts off with like four or five Mamluk style heavy cav and cavalry in medieval kingdoms, like you might imagine, is very scary. They are heavily armored. They will destroy infantry off of the charge. They are going to be a problem. Thankfully, we have some of our own. Knights Templar and the other Crusader factions are going to be lending us their troops and we're going to be recruiting a lot of those so that we can move southwards very quick. Now we also got to check out faction bonuses. One of the best ways to make Crusader states unique is give them different objectives and playstyles. and for the Kingdom of Jerusalem and Cyprus our faction bonus is the Knights of Outremer. Pragmatic Tolerance gives us a minus 25% public order penalty due to presence of other religions Headquarters of the Military Orders gives us minus 50% upkeep and construction cost for Crusader buildings, which allow us to create a lot of really good knight units really early on in the campaign. And Crusader Fortresses gives us a plus one siege holdout time 
and some construction cost reduction for settlement buildings. An antagonist of the Saracens, minus 40 diplomatic relations with all Muslim factions. So we are going to be at war with everyone around us. And as you just saw, there is a Pope mechanic as well. You can be excommunicated. The Papal States can declare war on you and being separated from God's good graces will likely mean every other Christian faction in your immediate vicinity absolutely hates your guts. You're gonna learn that real quick with the Holy Roman Empire, who starts with, I think, like 15 vassals, but in the first five turns, you've got 10 minor kingdoms all declaring war on you because you start the campaign excommunicado with Otto IV, I think a couple years after Pope Innocent III drops that ban hammer on you. So you're gonna be up to your neck and enemies in that, and it's gonna be the same thing here for the kingdoms of Outremer. You saw the tech tree. Some of those texts will take a very long time. I think a civic text take about 19 turns to start with, and the military ones take 40, but you can build up towards those really heavy knights and the late game tech. And this is the cool thing about this campaign is that you can actually see the technology really grow throughout the course of it. So when you get to the late stage, you can actually get your handguns and your full plate armor and your really crazily armored knights rather than just like the chain mail. They're gonna be rocking full plate amazing stats and like the bassinet helms and the really, I don't know, like iconic, famous, gothic style, 14th, 15th century style armors, if you get far enough into it. So we gotta do a little bit of diplomacy here, maybe get some early trade agreements, but yeah, Jerusalem, that's the crown jewel of the East and that's what we need to take. So that will be our first military action. And because we already moved all the way to Accra, we can actually move on it pretty much this turn and hopefully beat out Abu Bakr before he able, he's able to uh, link up with their garrison and really kind of give us a nightmare. But you know what time it is. It's Deus Vault time. It's always Deus Vault time when you're playing as the Crusader States. God wills it, but it looks like a half stack or quarter stack or... Uh, how many units is that? Eight. Eight units have kind of forced march their way from Damascus and they will be in reinforcement range of Jerusalem. So this is good, actually. I think we can attack right now and get both those stacks to fight us and we can take them both out in a single blow. But it's not as scary as if the entire Ayyubid Sultanate had just kind of collapsed on the settlement at the same time. They have a lot of armies. They're just kind of spread out and they didn't quite make it to Jerusalem in time. So if we attack it now and kind of fortify our positions, we might be in pretty good shape. And here we go. That is Hugh the First of Cyprus. And he's looking fancy as hell. One thing that you are really gonna notice about this mod, I'm sure some of you guys have seen it on, on basically the Apollo's or Jackie Fish's channel, or some of the other people who uh, do this content a bit more frequently than I do. There are some gorgeous models in this game. The knights look amazing. The units in general look absolutely incredible and are, from what I understand, relatively authentic too. So we are going to be having our jab cab moving out on the left flank, and I need to see where these guys are coming from. I'm not sure... There, okay. So they're going to be behind our cavalry. We deployed out on this side with our Knights Templar and Hospitaller or Hospitaller. I don't know. Hospitaller sounds better to me. I don't know if you guys want me to say Hospitaller or Hospitaller, but Hospitaller sounds better to me. So I'm going to rock that for now. If that's completely wrong, feel free to correct me. No big deal. But we're going to sally forth with our cavalry, and you will get to see the absolute monstrous power of medieval knights go to work in this mod. Now, if you remember, medieval 2 had some incredibly damaging, just mean cavalry. They'll just put you in the ground for good. You can obliterate entire units off the charge. I don't know if it's quite as OP. Cavalry, heavy cavalry is quite as OP in this mod as it was in medieval 2, but it's really strong. It is really strong. And the AI might not be doing the best thing here. They're going to try to fight our cav. Let's just kill them. I'm just gonna charge them and at least they got they got their charge bonus off so that's kind of impressive but the way this mod plays in battle is a bit like DEI it, it sh shares some characteristics there so you might notice that units will die very slowly especially in infantry grinds infantry fights will take a very long time uh, cavalry fights can do the same they have a lot of HP very high armor and they won't die very quickly until you get a rear charge so the way you win battles in Medieval Kingdoms is through manipulating morale just like that. If you fight from the front, they might fight for a very long time. If they're supported well, they might fight for a very long time. If you rear charge and get that flanking penalty off, 
units can break very quickly and you'll see entire chain routes. So those Cav did not have a very good time. They probably weren't going to be able to fight my Heavy Cav anyway. I mean, these are Knights Templar we're talking about and Poulain Knights, uh, full cavalry, who are rocking some pretty, pretty heavy duty gear. So yeah, that was not going to be fun for them. AI not really doing a very good job with their cavalry micro there. But the battle AI is not awful in Attila. And they flank pretty well, actually. They can pull off some pretty decent moves on the battlefield. But as you guys know, there are two huge gripes I have with Attila. And none of them have to do with the AI. I mean, AI is never like truly incredible in Total War games, but I don't think it's bad in this game. But number one, obviously Attila runs like ass. I think the fact that they never went back and truly optimized this game is kind of a travesty. I think they owed it to their customers and they didn't. Because their talk about it being, oh, it's optimized for future systems and future graphics cards was just like the biggest pile of BS I've ever heard. Like, that's gross, man. It clearly was not because it still, in 2018, runs like someone literally dropped a deuce on my processor and smeared it into the heat vents on my GPU. Come on, man. Like, see, we know Attila did not sell amazing, but people paid for it. Historical team should definitely go back and fix those FPS counters for people, like get the FPS up, because I think they just owe it to the people who bought the game. Because mechanics-wise, it's pretty solid. Uh, it's not bad. The color palette and lack of variety were the things that kind of killed it for me. Something, something Germanic, just a million Germanic tribes in Attila. But there were tons of good campaign ideas in there, which is why it's such a great vehicle for mods. Look at that glorious sandwich on those swordsmen. This cavalry is just going to run and train back here. And there's not a whole lot they can do. They're completely isolated. Pop some rallies for the defense and morale. And just murder everything over here with the cav. And we're going to take over back at the central plaza for Jerusalem. Which does not look like Jerusalem. But again, they're working on that, I think. Uh, we're going to be moving up with the infantry. Cav, still having a good time. So yeah, there's, there's that. The other thing I hate about Attila are these yellow and red banners. I hate them. I hate them so much. I would really like to see the Medieval Kingdoms mod team do what Seven Kingdoms did with their banners. Give each faction their own unique sigils and heraldry that is actually the icon you can click on over the top of a unit. Helps so much with immersion when you're in battle. I really hate those yellow and red icons. I just feel like it kills the immersion for me. When you zoom in and hit K and get these kind of close-ups, game looks gorgeous, but then you zoom out and you can't tell what mod you're playing. Like right now, I have no idea if I'm playing Rise of Mordor or Medieval Kingdoms besides the unit cards. Like with the unit icons themselves, I would have no idea. If I'm playing Rise of Mordor, I want to see the White Tree of Gondor over my infantry, not some generic yellow sword icon. I want to see the Yurikai White Hand of Saruman instead of some generic red pike icon if I'm fighting against Isengard. That's my issue with CA's design. It's obviously not a bash at the modders. But if it's possible, I would definitely like it if this mod team has the time, effort, and energy, or whatever. I know they've been working their asses off on it. But it'd be sweet if they could do what Seven Kingdoms did, which was give them their own unique colors and icons, rather than these ketchup and mustard cav and sword icons. Like, if you give them the real colors of that faction, it just helps at least me so much with immersion, and I'm pretty sure that helps a lot of other people too. But yeah, this calf is just running over stuff right now. Pancaking rear charges from behind. Killing all the sword infantry and the, even the spears. That is the kind of cool thing about Medieval Kingdoms. Is that if you charge spears from the rear, they are going to die. And they're going to die hard. The battle's going very well. I think pretty soon here, we're going to be able to take complete control. Wipe out this army on this side. And then move into the final capture point. And uh, wrap this one up. And then Jerusalem shall be ours. There's really not going to be a whole lot left standing in our way. That last arch unit just routed. I think they have a couple more up in the plaza, but really I think that this is pretty much going to be a stomp from here on out. So let's uh, head our way back to the campaign map. So our Ayyubid Sultanate counterparts were, were the adversaries, but they fell to our blade nonetheless. God wills it and we'll take Jerusalem, take back the Church of the Holy Sepulcher, and start building our own stuff. Now there's probably gonna, yeah, there's gonna be a mosque in there. We're gonna have to make some changes, some conversions here, cause we wanna spread Christianity if we're playing the Crusaders. That's the religion we definitely wanna be in control of right now. Spread that throughout the Holy Land. And I don't know if you guys saw it, but in the 
faction bonuses screen that we looked at a little bit earlier, there was actually a full care of Sharp Quote, who wrote one of the best chronicles of the First Crusade in service to King Baldwin. And he wrote, For we who were Occidentals have now become Orientals. We have already forgotten the places of our birth already. These are unknown to many of us or not mentioned anymore. Words of different languages have become common property known to each nationality, and mutual faith unites those who are ignorant of their descent. Indeed, it is written, the lion and the ox shall eat straw together. He who was born a stranger is now as one born here. He who was born an alien has now become a native. Basically, that taking part in so holy an undertaking and being brought into contact with so many new people of different faiths will change you as a person, and maybe for the better. Although tolerance back then often took a bit of a different form, like, I'll tolerate you on the end of the sword, heathen, that kind of thing. But no matter what, the Holy Land was definitely a melting pot of many different cultures all coming together, and there was plenty of cohabitation and trade, cultural osmosis, if you will, that occurred during this period as well. It wasn't all war and death and misery, but the Fourth Crusade has been called by His Holiness the Pope. The Bible may preach peace, but when it's Christendom itself that is threatened, then it is every Christian's duty to defend all that is holy. So we maybe want to join that up, but uh, we also have some more Ayyubid Sultanate armies coming our way. We just saw one at the border of Accra, and we're going to check out our alliance here, our trade agreements with the other Crusader states, and Genoa and Pisa. Italians all the way back home, probably where we set sail from during the crusade to begin with. But yeah, this Ayyubid army right here. That might be a problem. They are very close to our fortress in Accra. One turn away, and I don't think we can defend it. One thing I have noticed about Medieval Kingdom so far, the garrisons, at least on the lower level settlements, not very impressive. So we're going to pull our heavy cav out of there, because I don't think they can de uh, defeat that stack by themselves. Move our army from Jerusalem back over. And I like it because we've got a lot of roads in between these cities too. So we're covering a lot of ground every time we move. Pretty happy about that. And we are going to get there back in time to defend it in case they move in. Um, but I don't know if they're going to want to attack if we're garrisoned inside Accra. So what we might want to do is ambush. Maybe go into ambush stance and see if they'll move through the passway from Oms or Oms. And maybe do something dumb. Oh, we can just attack them. I think we're in range to already attack. Check out the ports real quick. Check out some of the economy. I'm not going to go too much into detail about these buildings, but you can see it for yourself. Like I said, there are some factions in Medieval Kingdoms 1212 AD that begin as economic powerhouses, where you're making like 7,000, 8,000 gold a turn. Holy Roman Empire is one of them. But if we want to start converting people, we definitely need to make a Catholic monastery. So we'll build that, and we'll build some cattle herds to get our money up, our food up, get our economy going a little bit better because the Crusader states don't have an amazing economy to start with, which kind of makes sense. They don't have a large foothold in the Holy Land, only a couple of settlements to start off with. So we've got plenty more work to do and we're gonna move out and think about attacking. Now, I don't know if they have an army in ambush waiting for me here. Could get a little bit scary. Oh, they're, in, they're garrisoning the city and there aren't very many. I don't know where Abu Bakr is right now, but I think we can just straight up take this. At your command. They don't have a walled settlement, so it'll be another village fight, which means cavalry can have some issues in those choke points for sure. But let's attack right now, and yeah, I think we can definitely take this. So, tell you what, we're going to fight one more battle for this campaign part, and see you on the battlefield itself. Be without fear in the face of your enemies. Be brave and upright that God may love thee. Speak the truth always, even if it leads to your death. Safeguard the helpless and do no wrong. That is your oath. And that is so you remember it. Rise a knight. Dude, the director's cut of Kingdom of Heaven was amazing. Just a great film. If you've never seen it before, I highly recommend it. I love that it actually showed decent people on both sides and kind of idiot trash cans on both sides of the conflict as well. Uh, Balian, definitely too much of a caricature for my taste. Uh, too white bread, too, without, too much without flaw, without fault. But I really like the movie overall. Just epic, epic film. And it fills up a lot of the plot holes and things that were kind of glossed over in the original theatrical release. Not that the uh, theatrical release was bad, 
but it was more like a popcorn flick just for the action. I felt like the full version, the director's cut, kind of made you think a bit more. And it just had more going for it. So if you've never seen director's cut for it, for Kingdom of Heaven, highly recommended. Awesome Crusader flick that shows both sides of the conflict and has redeeming characters and qualities on both sides, which I think is always cool when you can add a little bit more nuance to that story rather than just have it all be like, Crusader's good, Islam bad, or Islam good, Crusader's bad. Because there were very bad people on both sides of that. And there were some uh, decent ones as well, though. Their sense of morality in the, I guess, 1200s was a little bit different than the one we have today. But uh, humans still have some uh, stuff to work out. That's for sure. Okay, we've got things to kill in Total War. And we are attacking homes? Oms? I don't know how to pronounce that. But what we're going to do here is move directly into the city after a little bit of skirmishing. So I guess not truly direct. What we can do is have our cavalry go out and you should not be out here, boys. What are you doing? I'm gonna run you over. Cavalry impact uh, can do as much damage as Warhammer. In fact, even more so. I think you can get like 60 kills off the charge, no problem. Which you're never gonna do in the Warhammer games, but it doesn't quite have the meaty impact, the visual splendor of some of the charges from the earlier games. Medieval 2 kind of has it down, but the way the units actually interact with you when they get hit kind of looks goofy. It's a really old game at this point, obviously. Um, and obviously the Warhammer ones are completely over the top, but very satisfying to watch. There's a middle ground I think that historical games could go for. I hope Three Kingdoms kind of nails it when they go for that, because I'd like to see that white cavalry, the white horse cavalry for Gongs and Zan, just bowl stuff over, send it flying, but maybe not too much flying. A little bit, little bit more reserved than what we have in Warhammer, but still a good. There's a middle ground for sure. So, Spearmen routing in the center. That's a little bit scary. We're gonna need to get our cavalry into the flank here, and there is actually openings on both sides, both flanks. AI is getting very blobbed up in the center and kind of funneling outside the city, abandoning the choke points that they could have been defending right now. And in Medieval Kingdoms, that's not, not good because your guys can hold for a very long time if they're in a choke point and not getting outflanked. But we have an opportunity here to go for it. One thing I will say, I don't know if it was something they consciously changed, but Attila used to be, if you stood near a tower and captured it and it fell on you, even if you weren't near the tower, but you were in the radius of the capture point for it and it fell, it could kill like half the unit. I have not seen that happen yet in my playthroughs so far. Did a little bit of HRE gameplay and that didn't happen for me, which was nice because it is incredibly annoying to have like an elite infantry unit go capture a tower so it stops shooting you and then just lose half the unit as the thing collapses down on top of you but not really that close to you at all. Pretty frustrating. Don't know if you guys remember that from the Total War Attila days. But yeah, we're getting some good charges in with the Cav on the flanks. And getting into the cookie jar here. Uh-oh. Saracen Archer's in the back getting run down. And we can maybe get some rear charges off real soon too. Remember, it's all about manipulating that morale. And one of the best ways to do that in Medieval Kingdoms Turn on your fire arrows, which, as we all know, are not really historically accurate. Not typically used in a battlefield scenario for shooting troops. Maybe as like a signal flare, or maybe to light some kind of trap. But other than that, not too many practical uses. But you can use them in this mod, and they do have a pretty substantial morale penalty. So shoot those into units that are about to get flank charged or rear charged, and they will run for the hills and you're gonna start racking up a lot of kills. And the cavalry is back there now. Just need to finish up that general's unit. And once we've done that, we can go directly for the back of all these guys. And that's gonna be a lot of dead Ayyubid Sultanate troops. And the legacy of Salahuddin is uh, not gonna save them here. Gonna get a nice rear charge coming in right now. Just go for it, baby. Do it. Finish them off, Deus Volt, God wills it. Yeah, there we go. And that should precipitate a mass route kind of soon. I mean, they'll be able to hold on for a bit. They've got a lot of troops in the vicinity. So they won't have the outnumbered morale penalty. But with Hugh coming in from the flank. By the way, the general's bodyguards in this game, amazing. Amazing in combat. They're really hard to kill. And yeah, wavering. Mass routing, mass wavering. It's a good time. And we'll get some close-ups here. And it'll pretty much seal the deal. 
I've done some Ayub and Sultanate gameplay. I've done some Crusader gameplay now. I have done some HRE, and obviously I've played the multiplayer games. I've done some multiplayer content for this mod before, a couple, maybe like a year ago, a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago. I have definitely played it before, but there is nothing more satisfying. Doesn't matter which faction you're playing, which race you're playing, nothing more satisfying than a heavy cavalry charge into the back of infantry and seeing them mass route and running them down. Doesn't matter if you're playing as Salahuddin and the Mamluk cavalry that he's rocking, or you're rocking the Crusader cab that I have right now. Feels good to run them all down, and that will be your game, my friends. Awesome. So let's go back to the campaign map. I will see you there, and we can uh, finish up this video and kind of talk about our thoughts overall. So, Attila is one of my least favorite Total Wars. I just feel like the performance is the biggest issue. It kills my desire to play it sometimes. And uh, that and the variety that was present when the game first came out really just killed my desire to play it pretty early on. But this just adds so much content, so many factions, so many star positions, so many new ways to play and a really overarching campaign that allows you to go from early on in the medieval period to a stage much later where you're rocking almost renaissance style armies near the end. It's amazing. I think that this is going to be an amazing mod when it's all said and done. I don't know exactly what their grand plans are, how much of it will finally come together. Obviously putting a campaign together like this takes a very long time. It's not an easy thing to do. But what they have right now is very impressive, and if they're able to work in siege assets to make them look medieval rather than looking like the Attila siege maps, if they're able to work in some more unique mechanics, which I know they are, they have the Papal States mechanic, I know that the HRE is going to get some new stuff as well, uh, Kingdom of Jerusalem, I don't know if you noticed it, but when we took it, when we took Jerusalem itself, it changed capitals uh, from... Uh, Farmada Guza, or whatever the place in Cyprus was, it uh, changed over to Jerusalem, what became our new capital. And then there are going to be wonders, I think, they also are planning on adding. So a lot of the unique settlements will get special buildings that will, I mean, I imagine Church of the Holy Sepulchre will become one of the things in Jerusalem itself. So a lot of cool stuff on the way. I had, I have probably played about maybe six hours of campaign so far throughout two or three separate campaigns. Really enjoyed what I have played so far, and the mod is shaping up really nice. Again, this is basically alpha stage gameplay. It is a long way from being complete, and there are going to be a lot more mechanics that come later on. But I have had a blast with it so far, really enjoying it, and let me know what you think of all this gameplay that you've seen, if it looks like something you might be interested in, and which factions you are going to want to play, and which faction you might want to see me play. I don't think I'm going to do like a full campaign playthrough. I don't know yet, but I'm definitely going to be creating more content for it because I think there's a lot to be offered here and it will be a nice change of pace from Warhammer. Not that I'm going to stop posting Warhammer content, but obviously nice to uh, branch out a bit more, especially if this video does well. Um, yeah, I mean, it'll be fun. So hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next video. Indie Pride signing out for now. Have a good one, guys.